This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to all of you, uh, those who are gathered here in our sanctuary today and those who are joining us from many parts, um, actually around the world, uh, in our worship service today. It is a joy to be gathered here, um, not only on a Sunday in the season of Easter, but Mother's Day. And here at First Presbyterian Church, we give thanks for all the women in our lives who have served as mentors and teachers and role models who have mothered and looked after us. And we are grateful. Um, I'm grateful to Hank Robertson, who has uh, shared our floral arrangement today in honor and memory of all those women who have served us in this way. We thank you. We uh, are continuing uh, to, during this season of pandemic, um, we are continuing to gather in incremental ways. Our prayer shawl ministry is meeting in small groups, socially distanced. I have, I hope, good news for those who would like to. In June, um, the first Wednesday, we will resume a Bible study, and this will be Exodus with the Brueggemann study. Uh, I shared that with Session uh, at our last meeting. And looking forward to gathering in place and beginning able to see people again. We do thank everyone that you continue to observe social distancing protocols. Um, I had the opportunity the first time in about 14 months la last week. Uh, I was able to worship virtually with the congregation as our good friend Dr. Roger Horn preached. But the church I attended was the first small group they had had in 15 months in their building at First Baptist in downtown Raleigh. Most of the Raleigh churches are still doing everything virtually. So I'm thankful we have the opportunity for this hybrid option and appreciate everyone's cooperation. Um, to share with you just a note in our prayer concerns, um, we have had uh, three households in our faith community in the past several weeks who um, have contracted COVID, even with the vaccine available, and this includes youth and children. So we continue to be very careful, and we offer our prayers for them in uh, what is a, a time of recovery and healing. Our pastoral aide and uh, one of our deacons, uh, Dot Elmore, has begun chemotherapy for a diagnosis of leukemia. Dot was in good spirits yesterday and had received her second treatment. I was in touch with her, and uh, we continue. Dot, if you're listening today, we offer our prayers for you. Also, uh, Wayne Dockery, um, uh, who has served as an elder here in our congregation and with our safety team, uh, underwent surgery. He is recovering at home. And uh, thankfully, uh, the pain was not quite as bad as he feared it might be, so we pray for his good healing as well. Uh, one other pastoral note, uh, just in our community, uh, during the pandemic, um, one of the things is young couples who've had wedding plans, everything was thrown awry. And so that's one of the tasks that I as a pastor have been called into. And one of our couples in the community who I performed their marriage last June, um, and, uh, and later I contracted COVID, later they contracted COVID, but um, Olivia uh, Throckmorton gave birth to a beautiful, healthy baby girl yesterday, and we give thanks to God. Um, Olivia works with Jeremy Pierce, one of our members, and, uh, but uh, Olivia said that I could share on behalf of her and Taylor the welcome of Kennedy today. So, Continue in prayer, continue what we're doing, and we come into God's presence. I have an announcement because um, there are other, as we incrementally begin to try to do other things, our youth are busy, and I'd like to call on Davis and uh, Tony. I'm having a COVID moment, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Tony's grown so tall since I last saw him, it took me a moment to recognize him the other week. Um. The youth is going to have a potato bake on Sunday, May 23rd, immediately following the service. The fundraiser is going to help with the cost of sending nine youth and three leaders to the Montreat Youth Conference. The trays are available to go and drive through. The cost is by donation. Uh, the sign up sheet for dessert donations is on the table in the back. COVID precautions will be taken. Okay. Thank you all for supporting the youth. And Davis and Tony, thank you guys. 
The, um, and just to be clear, what this is, our usual potato bake is a wonderful time for fellowship and gathering. It's been a long time since we do that. This will be, as they mentioned, uh, because of our current situation, it'll be takeout. But this you can do to support them because they have the opportunity to go to Montreat Youth Conference this summer. Again, it'll be very different with masking and social distancing, but we're really excited because they missed out on the opportunity last year. So if you can do anything to support them, it is appreciated. As God's people, let us come be called into the presence of God in worship. Let us read responsively. Let us sing to the Lord a new song has done marvelous things. Let us make known the Lord's victory, for God's steadfast love covers the whole earth. Let us sing joyful praises and join all creation to worship God's holy name. Let us pray. Holy God, the power of your love is beyond comprehension. The breadth of your compassion without measure in Jesus Christ, you have met us in the midst of life's joys and challenges and shown us what it means to love and to be loved. You have entrusted us with the greatest commandment to love one another as Christ has loved us. In this time of worship, we offer you our love and loyalty, seeking to learn more of what love and loyalty mean for us in the midst of our joys and challenges. Receive our prayers and praise, and through the power of your Spirit, draw us closer to you and closer to each other as friends and followers of Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Today, we move from our gathering time into a time of uh, turning to God and making repentance um, to let go of the burdens that we have carried before the throne of grace and mercy. Together, we pray and confess our sin, but also affirm our baptism. Merciful God, we confess we often find it difficult to love others as you commanded. Though we intend to do your will, our priorities lead us in other directions. We seek our own security before the well-being of others. We fulfill our own desires rather than act for the common good. We justify our own interests, fail to understand the cost they take on the earth and other people. Forgive us, redirect our priorities, and renew our commitment to live out your love even when it demands more of us than we expect. Amen. Let us take a moment to come into God's presence with a time of silence and listening to the Spirit moving among us. Sisters and brothers in Christ, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? only Christ, and Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, Christ prays for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and made new by God's generous grace. Even in a time that we have been physically apart but joined together in the spirit, we have continued our moment for our young people and time with children. And it's my great privilege to call Davis Bell forward at this time to share that message. 
And Davis, you can get wherever you're comfortable. There's a stool there or however you'd like to do it. So I can get the kids to come down, all both of them. <laughs> and Davis, remember you've got kids at home. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, and all of those way up there. All right. Wait, this. All right. Have you ever been caught outside in a rainstorm? You like it? No. Your clothes get wet, your shoes get squishy. Horrible. It's horrible. Well, the good thing about rain is that it refreshes the earth. It soaks into the soil and helps plants grow, and that's how we get these beautiful flowers and many other beautiful flowers, especially this time of year. Uh, when rain falls, who does it fall on? All, it falls on everybody, right? It doesn't only fall on the kids or only fall on the adults. It falls on everybody. Tall, short, male, female, everybody gets wet in the rain. This idea can help us understand today's Bible story. A crowd of people were gathered together after Jesus had left, had left to be with God, and the story tells us, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. In the crowd, there were all types of believers, but they didn't all worship in the same way, and none of us worship in the same way. We all have different ways of connecting to God, but we all still feel the Holy Spirit, and that's just like the rain. The rain falls on everyone, and God, his Spirit, falls on everyone. Let's have a prayer. Dear Lord, please help us know when you are reigning on us and help us to hear your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, you can go back up. Guys, thank you, and Davis, that was great. We appreciate the message. We continue our worship today and in our uh, abbreviated form of worship in these days with uh, our virtual communication. We share both passages of the common lectionary readings, the Old and the New Testament. This can be found in the bulletin for those at home, which is located online. Today I'll be reading from the New Testament in the book of Acts. Together I invite you to share with me as we listen for God's word to us. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. And then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people? who have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have. So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's story, though it may not be readily evident from the short context, is it's a great dilemma. What we find is Peter is head of the new church. Jesus said, I want you to feed my sheep. You're going to be the rock upon which the church is built. But Peter, um, who always had many questions in Jesus' own lifetime, is wondering, what do I do? Who do I include? Who do I reach out to? And uh, he's, a, he's in a tension, a fight with members of the church because the passage is very clear. When they say circumcised believers, it's people who've grown up Jewish just like he has. That this is the way you worship God. These are the traditions you observe. This is the way it is. I know no Presbyterian's ever been guilty of that when it comes to practicing their faith. You know, this is how we do things. But suddenly... Peter, without Jesus, on his own, is wrestling 
with what it means to be church. Who can come? Who is welcome? Is this really just a fulfillment of a covenant for the Jewish people? The ones foretold by the Jewish prophets? Uh, Jennifer Templeton uh, did such a beautiful message this morning in the uh, pre-Kirk and Wee-Kirk program as she talked about the transfiguration, how the disciples, including Peter, were trying to figure out who Jesus really was, what he was about. And in that story, um, Moses and Elijah appear, and there's a lot of speculation. You know, are they ghosts? Are they people? But the reality is that the way the story is told and the way the church understood it is Moses and Elijah are real, even though they have gone from this life hundreds of years earlier. And suddenly, they're dealing with a resurrected Christ in Peter's own time in today's message. And what that means is that this moment, this time, and this experience is not the end. It's a snapshot, just a snapshot. There's something more, greater, more wonderful lying before us. So Peter has a moment, not something he can control, but let's just say an answer from God. He's gone to um, Cornelius, a Roman centurion. They're Gentile listeners all around. And as they have preached and shared the Word of God, just as you and I have shared it today here in this sanctuary and at home in many places, the Holy Spirit moves. It moves. It, it comes upon them. And it comes upon people who are not under the law circumcised, who are not observing all the rituals and things you have to do of how to wash your pots and pans of what, you know, unleavened bread and leavened bread is about. It's upon an, a wider, entirely new group of people. And Peter understands. And you and I are invited to that moment to understand that God is doing a new thing. The prophets had been saying that for centuries, but God the Spirit of the Lord had come upon them and said, there will come the day that I will redeem my people and make all things new. Imagine what this pandemic has done. It's reset a lot of things. We've learned what is essential and what is not essential. In many ways, pastors, elders, you as a church member, you and your families, you and your workplace, have really had a chance to work from a clean slate. Some, at times, including myself, may think things have been taken away and have become harder. But for in faith, we know too, we've been given an opportunity to do new things, to be a new people. We're having a, a moment of Pentecost. Now, we're still a couple of weeks out. On the 23rd, with the potato bake and the uh, seniors who are graduating, we're going to recognize them. That's Pentecost Sunday. But this is sometimes called the Gentile Pentecost. Because where the, on, Holy, on, on Holy Pentecost, when the Spirit ascended, it was among Jewish followers primarily, even though they could talk with everybody in the community. But here in this moment, Peter, as head and leader of the church, realizes the Spirit falls upon all who believe the Word, who understand that Jesus is Messiah. And that's such good news. But Peter is astounded in this moment because he's wrestling with questions just like we wrestle with. He may have been in the company of Jesus. He's preached, and the people heard it. What astounded him were that these were not people of his own nationality, of his own language, his own kin, but they still had their hearts filled with the Holy Spirit. He saw that what happened in this moment in his teaching, in his demonstration of the word, that the Holy Spirit came exactly as it did on the day of Pentecost when they all waited together to hear that word. We in a first Presbyterian church or any Presbyterian church, we often fall back on when things are changing, we're trying to understand we are a people reformed, always reforming according to the will of God. And that doesn't necessarily mean our own will, 
but that God is going to make things new, sometimes in spite of us. This morning, I woke up to this song, um, Wide Open Spaces. Now, the sermon title I'd planned two or three weeks ago, but I I was hoping that was a good sign. But what that means for all of us in this day and time, as we witness this moment, the Gentile Pentecost, this coming of the Holy Spirit is, is that with all our questions and our uncertainty about what may lie ahead for you and me in the future, we still in faith take leaps of, with courage and with hope and with trust that God's hand is in this. Y'all are familiar with the lyrics who doesn't know what I'm talking about, who's never left home, who's never struck out to find a dream and a life of their own, a place in the clouds, a foundation of stone. Good Peter reference there. Many proceed and many will follow. Someone's gone before us and people will come after. The saints who have been, who are, and who are yet to come. The lyrics, a young girl's dream, no longer hollow, But what it holds for her, she hasn't yet guessed. She needs wide open spaces, room to make big mistakes. She needs new faces. Peter has had this moment. The church is having this moment. The the church is not an entity under the old law that meant death. But in Jesus Christ, we have been redeemed in this Easter season, this Easter message, to become a new reality, a new beginning. Just let go of the past, to embrace that new future. Now, admittedly, you know, when I look out here, I didn't anticipate that everybody would be wearing masks and look like we are going to rob a bank somewhere down the road. But we are living into a new reality, and it takes baby steps. It's not great leaps. The change may have been sudden, but we are, I assure you, living into the future that is filled with the Holy Spirit for those who believe. And this is all part of it. And there will be those who come after who will thank you because you're the saints. You are the saints. You are the place where the Holy Spirit enters in to make way for a new day. But the disciples didn't understand this entirely. They argued with Peter, the first ones, those who felt that this needed to have more of a Jewish flavor. The Gentile flavor seemed to contaminate or change or upend things as they'd known it. It's hard for them to believe, even Peter himself, that Jesus would call someone who was persecuting the early church, even killing them, even killing their first deacon, Stephen, when Saul becomes Paul on the road to Damascus. But you see, that's how the Spirit works. When and where we least expect it, and what is in the broken places. But Jesus didn't just drop drop this on them following the resurrection. He was giving hints all along leading up to it, even giving Peter hints when he was saying harsh things like, get thee behind me, Satan. He said, there is a new day coming, there is a new covenant, just as the prophets and even the law have foretold. So I want to share a little passage with you out of John 7. The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering such things about Jesus, and the chief priests and the Pharisees, they sent the temple police to arrest him. And Jesus then said, I will be with you a little while longer, and then I'm going to him who sent me. You will search for me, but you will not find me, and where I am you cannot come. And the Jews said to one another, where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion that was up in the north among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, you will search for me and you will not find me? And where am I? You cannot come. But on the last day of the festival, it was the festival of booths, the great day, 
Jesus was standing there and he cried out publicly in an open assembly, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let anyone who believes in me drink. As the scripture said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit which believers in him were about to receive. It was not yet that Jesus said it plainly and clearly. I'm with you only a while, a little while longer. But something greater is coming. Something more wonderful is coming. On this Gentile Pentecost, I'm quoting N.T. Wright, New Testament scholar, you the saints hear this. Those in whom the Spirit comes to live are God's new temple. They are individually and corporately, you and me, and as a congregation and as the church, we are the places where heaven and earth meet. Amen. I ask you to share with me our affirmation of faith with the saints who have come before us, who are and who are yet to come. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Everywhere I go, the 
so much in our congregation happens um, because of the quiet movements of those who volunteer, Ruth and Patrick, thank you, and Kathy Rice, who's volunteering her gifts with the piano today, and Greg Bell, who is videoing so that others can share in our time of worship in the presence of God. We give thanks. A moment of the eternal now is when we come to this table, all who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, who have shared in the word and heard it, are welcome to participate in this holy meal where all are welcome. We practice an open table. In this time, we invite those who are at home to share whatever elements they may have to represent the body and blood of Christ in our congregation Hopefully, each of you have received the individual packet. For those who may not have used it before, there are two layers, one the bread in the top and then a second layer with the juice. From north and south, from east and west, we are called to share in the Lord's feast. Together, let us pray. We lift up our hearts and give you thanks, O God, for blessed are you, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death, and you destroyed the power of death forever. You have raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, and poured upon us your Holy Spirit making us people of a new covenant, a new reality. Today, we pray for the world. We pray for those who hunger, who, for those who live in fear, those caught in the midst of war. We pray for those who are suffering the effects of illness in many places and for those who provide their care. We lift up to you the church encountering a new reality and a new reformation in these days. We pray for its leaders, many of whom are tired and weary. We celebrate the memory of those who have gone before us, especially on this special secular observance of Mother's Day. We remember all the women who have shaped us, informed us, and served as our teachers and cared for us. And for this community of faith, we lift up to you our needs for those who need healing, for those who may still feel isolated. We give thanks, O God, that on the night before meeting with death, Jesus took the bread and gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, and he gave thanks to you and gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. O Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, that in the breaking of the bread and drinking of the wine we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at this table forever and ever and ever. In courage, in boldness, and in faith we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ that is broken for us. The blood of Christ poured out into the cup of salvation. Come, Holy Spirit, and be with us. Together, brothers and sisters, let us feast and know the goodness of the Lord.
Let us pray. Ancient of days, you are our, our beginning and ending. In your Son, Jesus Christ, you have created a new covenant, a new kind of community beyond law, but where we are redeemed through and by the Spirit. Help us in belief and faith to come to you, to be filled with the Spirit, to be transformed as citizens of the kingdom of God, to look with hope and faith and love to the future, the path before us. And we ask your blessing now in Jesus' name, nourished at your table. Amen. So many things to be thankful for. Um, and one of the events in the church, not often celebrated in the Reformed tradition, is the Feast of Ascension, and this will be Thursday. But this is the day when the disciples saw Christ ascend into heaven. And they were left with the same questions, the same uncertainty, and experiences that we have that Peter experienced in our scripture today. This Thursday, May 13th, the day of Ascension, and the church observes the ascent of the resurrected Jesus into the heavens. Today, as we offer our gifts in thanksgiving, remember that we continue to celebrate Christ Jesus as Lord of all times and all places. Let us pray. Generous God, we bless you for your gift of life, renewed through Christ's love, Bless us and the gifts we bring so that our lives may reflect the hope and renewal we have found in Christ throughout our community. Amen. I charge you now as you prepare to enter into the world to enter it as a wide open space, not full of fear, but full of hope and promise. We go as Peter to make our big mistakes, but we go with courage and faith, knowing that the Lord is there to receive us through all you say and do in your very thoughts. Be the light of Christ to those you encounter. And now, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May God be kind and gracious unto us. And may the Lord look upon us all with favor, now and forevermore. And as children of this new covenant, we say, Amen. Amen.